Chapter 26. New Perspectives. I accompanied Raphael while reflecting on Laura's kind and wise suggestions, determined not to make mere observational visits, but rather to start a period of learning and useful service. Amazed, I noticed the magnificent features of this unfamiliar region as we made our way to where Minister Genicio was waiting for me. However, I followed Raphael in silence, refraining from asking any questions. Instead, I was experiencing a new kind of mental activity, i.e., I was devoting myself entirely to prayer. I was asking Jesus to assist me on this new path so that I might not lack work and the strength to accomplish it. I used to be adverse to the practice of prayer, but now I turn to it as a valuable, sensible resource for my purposes of service. Even Raphael looked at me curiously from time to time, as if he had not expected such an attitude on my part. The Airbus left us in front of a large building. We got off in silence. Within a few minutes, I was standing in front of the respectable Genicio, a nice elderly man whose face displayed uncommon energy. Raphael introduced me fraternally. Oh, yes, said the kind minister. So you're our brother Andre. At your service, I answered. I received a note from Laura saying that you would be coming. Please feel at ease here. Meanwhile, my companion respectfully said goodbye to the minister and then embraced me. Raphael was urgently expected at his duties in his own department. Setting his bright eyes on me, Genicio began, Clarencio has already told me about you and showed a great deal of interest. We often receive personnel from the Ministry of Assistance on observational visits, which usually become periods of service. I understood his subtle allusion and remarked, That is my greatest desire. I have even prayed to the divine forces to assist my feeble spirit so that my stay in this ministry might turn into a period of internship. Genicio seemed pleased, and availing myself of inspirations that inclined me to humility, I begged with moist eyes, Minister, I can see that my coming here via the Ministry of Assistance came about exclusively because of the mercy of the Most High. Perhaps in answer to the constant intercession of my devoted and holy mother, I've noticed, however, that I have only been receiving benefits without producing anything useful in return. My place is surely here, taking part in regenerative activities. If possible, please turn my permission to visit into the possibility to serve. I now understand, as never before, the need to modify my own values. I've wasted too much time on useless vanity and have misspent a tremendous amount of energy on foolish self-worship. He appeared satisfied as he saw that I was speaking with living sincerity from the bottom of my heart. When I asked Minister Clarencio for work, I wasn't really aware of what I was asking at the time. I had certainly wanted to work, but perhaps not to serve. I hadn't yet realized the value of time or learned to appreciate the sanctified blessings of opportunity. Deep down, I had really wanted to continue being what I had been until then, the proud and respected doctor, blind to the preposterous claims of the self-centeredness in which I was living and imprisoned within my own preconceptions. Now, however, in light of all I had seen and heard, and understanding the responsibility of each child of God in the infinite work of creation, I was speaking from what was best in me. At last, I was being sincere. I wasn't worried about the kind of job. I was seeking the sublime contentment of the spirit of service. Genicio seemed surprised as he looked at me and asked, Were you really a doctor? Yes, I answered timidly. He was silent for a few moments, as if searching for a solution to my case. Then he said, Your aims are praiseworthy, and I ask the Lord to preserve you in such an honorable attitude. And as if concerned about cheering me up and lifting my spirits with new hope, he added, When the disciple is ready, the Father sends the Master. The same applies regarding labor. When the worker is ready, work will appear. My friend, you have received enormous resources from divine providence. 
You are willing to cooperate. You understand your responsibility. And you have accepted your duty. Such an attitude is undoubtedly favorable for you to accomplish your desires. In physical circles, we used to congratulate the person who attained financial prosperity or an outstanding position. Here, however, the situation is different. We value understanding, self-effort, and sincere humility. Noticing my anxiety, he concluded, It's possible for you to find a good occupation here, but for the time being, it is better for you to visit, to observe, and to study. Then he contacted the office next door, saying firmly, I would like to see Tobias before he goes to the chambers of rectification. A few moments later, a gentleman with a pleasant demeanor came into the room. Tobias, explained Genicio, here is a friend who has come from the Ministry of Assistance in order to observe. I believe a visit to the chambers of rectification would be greatly beneficial. I shook his hand, and my new friend answered kindly, At your service. Show him the way, continued the minister with great kindness. Andre must become thoroughly acquainted with our duties here. Please see to it that he is given every opportunity available. Tobias very willingly agreed. On my way, he added good-naturedly, if you would come with me. Certainly, I answered, satisfied. Minister Genicio was deeply moved and embraced me, saying words of encouragement. Then I resolutely followed Tobias. We crossed great city blocks where the numerous buildings seemed like beehives of intense activity. Perceiving my silent questions, my new friend explained, These are the great factories of Nasolar, the preparation of juices, the manufacture of woven goods, and all kinds of commodities employ over 100,000 individuals who enlighten and regenerate themselves while working. A few moments later, we entered a magnificent building. Many workers were hurrying to and fro. After going down long hallways, we came to a gigantic stairway that led to the lower floors. Let's go on down, said Tobias gravely. And noting my surprise, he explained solicitously, The chambers of rectification are located in the neighborhood of the umbral. The unfortunate spirits being kept there can bear neither the light nor the atmosphere of the upper levels during their first days in Nosalar.